Hello fellow cinephiles, Film Guru here. For those who new to the channel, my name's Sean, also known as Film Guru, and I started this channel having my same particular variety of movies and film content. So thanks for joining me today. Today I'm reviewing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Taking the reins this time is James Mangold, and it stars once again Harrison Ford, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Toby Jones, Mads Mikkelsen, Antonio Banderas, and returning once again as solo is John Rhys Davies. This film finds Indiana Jones aging on the verge of retirement and feeling like he's been left behind and forgotten. His students aren't interested in what he has to say during his teachings. And he just feels a bit lost in a world he doesn't quite understand. And he's suffered a lot and doesn't know how to function anymore. His life has shaken up with the appearance of Helena Shaw, his goddaughter, daughter of Basil Shaw, an old friend of Indiana Jones's, and they went on an adventure together. And she's seeking and searching for something particular. Indiana Jones, feeling he has nothing left, ultimately gets swept up in this adventure, and him and his goddaughter set off on this journey. He finds himself once again up against Nazis trying to find something that everybody else is searching for. It, it feels like he's the last hurrah. When this was announced, Spielberg was originally attached, and I was kind of hesitant but also interested. I felt the last Indiana Jones wasn't great. The first 30 or 40 minutes I didn't mind. The rest of it just felt a bit wishy-washy and it felt like it was going more into the science fiction element rather than the supernatural. But I thought if we were going to do one more, Spielberg would be the guy to do it. And ultimately he pulled out and James Mangold stepped in. Look, I'm a fan of Mangold. I, I like his other movies. I think he's a talented filmmaker. He's very creative. And I think he does a solid job with this film. I think he puts into it a lot of nostalgia to make you feel and connect to it. And, and it sort of connects back to something from Indiana Jones's past. And I kind of like that. It felt like, and it, it felt like they were really trying to connect the audience again, once again, to this character that was huge in his first trilogy. And he's a very well-known character and an iconic character. And I think overall they do a solid job with that. There are moments where it feels a bit like, Guess what? We're watching an Indiana Jones film. I think that's what they were kind of going for. Trying to get back to nostalgic feel, trying to create a nostalgic feel for this character and the, these stories. And, and also trying to connect to the nostalgic feel of this character and, and the films that came before. While also be, be continuing on the adventurous spirit of the character. And this film really accomplishes that. I found it highly entertaining. There was a great journey these characters went on. It felt like we're a bit more practical than we were in the previous film. It felt like we're actually on location and going to these different places. There's some good sequences in it. I thought the train sequence was fine at the beginning of the film. There's some car chase and variety of things throughout it. But I think they put in a lot of adventure stuff like this. One, because it's Indiana Jones, but two, Harrison Ford's getting fairly old now and he isn't as capable as he once was. And I think that they filled this film with these sort of action sequences to keep it entertaining with the fact that he, what he could do was a bit limited. I, I, I like the journey the characters go in. I think Helena Shaw is kind of interesting. I found her slightly annoying to begin with, and her motivations aren't clear, even when we get to the end of the film. She feels like a very conflicting character and isn't consistent all the way through, and I think that lets her character down a bit, but she is still interesting. I, I like her and Indiana Jones working together and, and how they're trying to maneuver and, and see how each other works while trying to continue moving forward. Villain-wise, look, to me, you can't have an Indiana Jones film without him coming up against Nazis in some form. Yes, they went with Russians in the last film, but the Nazi aspect just feels much more like Indiana Jones. And we go back to Son of the World War II at the beginning of the film, and then we're in 1969. And the idea of putting the Nazi-esque characters in this era was kind of really interesting. And Mads Mikkelsen's fine. Like, he starts off kind of like a normal bumbling scientist then he becomes kind of an intriguing character slightly that you're not quite sure what he's going to do but then he resorts back to what he was at the beginning of the film and I just felt like there wasn't a lot for Mads to do like he's a really great actor they keep putting him in villain roles but he's much more talented than that and can play a variety of roles but I just think he was a bit limited with what he was able to do with this character it's good to see the nostalgic characters coming back from the previous films. I thought that was really great, especially Sola and the relationship between him and Indiana Jones and, and the strong bond that connects them that I love. And it's good to see him, even though he was only in for a limited time. It's kind of interesting to see him return. A lot of the adventure in this film felt a bit like 
Tomb Raider in a way. And, and I know that like Tomb Raider is probably inspired by Indiana Jones and the mummy and all these other things, but it just felt, this one just felt a bit more like Tomb Raider in that regard. But I still enjoyed that aspect. I thought it was still entertaining as well. It sort of was old school filmmaking, but it was also something new and I, I did enjoy that. And Toby Jones is solid as well as Basil Shaw. I don't know why he hadn't been in the Indiana Jones movie before. I think he's great. He's very funny and entertaining and he plays quite a colorful character and I like the relationship between him and Indiana Jones. I, I, I like the relationships that Indiana Jones has with particular people, but only the film really is Harrison Ford. His ability to bring Indiana Jones back to the screen is extraordinary. It goes to show that, yes, Indiana Jones was created by Spielberg and George Lucas, but it was Harrison Ford who injected so much into the role that really made him iconic and made him a very, very fascinating, interesting character that has spanned decades. And you really get to see how much he puts into this. I like that he's much older in this, this film and he's not as capable as he was. I, I like that he's full of regrets because he, he's going towards the end of his life rather than the beginning. And I like how he's still trying to navigate through what's happening and he just feels a bit depressed and, and lost. He's really to express the character here, which felt like an evolution of the character in a way and I like that. He brings so much to this role. He's really great to see him return to something that he, you can clearly sit, see he loves and cares about. Where other characters like Han Solo, he didn't care as much, but this he has a love and an affection for this character and you see that and it comes through in his performance and the recreation of this character on screen and I absolutely loved it. He's been, he's been consistent through all the films, especially these last two. The stories have been a little wishy-washy and not quite sure what they were doing and having too many writers, but he always is consistent and I respect him for that and I love the fact he is. What I really miss about the early Indiana Jones is a practicality to it. This has a little practicality. We're actually going to places where the previous film felt it was all shot on a back lot or a set and it just sort of felt very contained where this felt like we were actually traveling the world in different times and they did their best to recreate those cities and towns and places they went that looked like they did during the late 60s. But there's something missing with the practicality, in my opinion. There's too much digital effects now. There's a sequence in it where he rides the horse or the train sequence and nothing quite looks right. There's this sequence where they de-age him and to begin with it looks okay but as the scene goes on you start to see that it's computer generated and it just loses the power and impact and it takes you out of the movie which was disappointing. And the choice they make in the end, the third act, what they choose to do right at the end I don't know if I really liked. I felt that it got a little, shall we say, a little tiny bit silly and kind of bit unbelievable in a way. Indiana Jones always, has always had this sort of supernatural aspect to it. But there's something about when they start to, like the previous film, get into science fiction-y areas that just feel the people aren't quite understanding that it's supernatural elements not sci-fi. It was, like I said, an inconsistency with Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. I, I didn't quite understand her motives or her logic behind what, certain things she was doing. And right at the end just felt a bit too sentimental or too hallmarky or too Disney that I, I felt disappointed in it. With the journey we go on the characters, with all the places that we go, and things that happen, it just felt the ending would just let the movie down. Final thoughts. In the end, it's a fun, adventurous journey. It's great to see Indiana Jones on the big screen again, his last kind of hurrah. It wasn't as good as it could have been, but I was still entertained with it. I'm gonna give Indiana Jones, The Doll of Destiny, three and a half out of five. I thought it was solid and somewhat entertaining, but it just never quite got to where I expected it to get. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe down the bottom, follow me on Letterboxd and Facebook. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.